You can now protect an on-premises server by replicating it to an Amazon Web Services EC2 instance. It's actually possible to protect multiple servers to the same EC2 instance for a very cost-effective solution. The Replication Creation Wizard lets you create and configure a VCP and a VPN connection between the on-premises network and a cloud-based target. The repository server is an EC2 instance with ArcServe RHA installed. The recovery replica is also an EC2 instance with the same disk layout as the master server. The recovery replica is kept offline and its disks are attached to the cloud repository server. The RHA scenarios are created from the on-premises master servers to the exposed volumes on the cloud repository. When a failover condition is triggered, the exposed volumes attached to the cloud repository are attached back to the recovery replica. The recovery replica is then started and users are redirected to this server until switchback occurs. To demonstrate the full server to Amazon Web Services protection scenario, I have protected a Windows SQL server running on VMware to an EC2 instance running in the Sydney region of AWS. Detailed scenario statistics and scheduled automated reporting give you an insight into how the protection scenario is performing. To demonstrate the fail over to AWS, I'm going to bring up my SQL Server, which is called SQL Standalone 1, and I'm going to make some changes to my database. This will demonstrate the real-time replication nature of RHA. I've made some changes. I'm just going to power off the VMware virtual machine. I'm then going to wait for the virtual machine to stop and await for the RHA scenario to detect the failure condition. We can now see from this scenario statistics that the master has been disconnected. It is no longer online. As an administrator of the scenario, I can now invoke a switch over to the AWS instance. Now I have accelerated the video sequence, but essentially in the background, RHA is communicating with the EC2 API to create a new instance using the disk previously attached to the cloud repository server that contained all of the data from the production SQL server. We can observe the process from the log, the rolling log file in the RHA console. And we can see now that we have a SQL server that's been created in the AWS console. And we're really just waiting for that to be powered on in order to complete the scenario. Now we can see the SQL server has been started and we just need to wait for it to boot up so we can connect to it. Okay, my SQL server has booted. I have assigned an elastic IP so I can RDP directly to the server. So I can now log on. Again, I'm using my, my original username and password for the SQL server, which was in a domain called Demo5. Windows will need to be reactivated due to the change in hardware, but I can see my server name is SQL Standalone 1, exactly as my production VMware virtual machine was. I can open up SQL Server Management Studio and connect again to the same database I was connected to previously. I'm going to connect to the same table and look at the data that I changed the moment before I shut down the VMware virtual machine. And we can see the changes were replicated to AWS.